Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us here. I'm Eric Connors. And I'm Nettie Romper. Some cookies and some tea. Sure. That sounds like a good start to the day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sounds nice and uh, cozy, if you ask me. Uh, we got a few sprinkles, though. Yep. Still in the forecast, right, Evan? Because yeah, what's you and I got our car washed. Right. Netta. Right. Yeah. Okay. Sorry Listen, guys, never ruled out the chance for showers, so that's still the mix. <laughs> I was going to ask what your favorite Girl Scout cookie is. Thin mints. Thin They're mints? in the freezer right now. Oh, you got to go with Samoas. Okay. Samoas. We'll oh. check in with Jenny when we get to traffic, so you have to wait for hers. Okay. Here's the view outside <laughs> right now. Uh, cloud cover really light for the most part, at least uh, thinning clouds as we head into the next several hours. We're going to look at a partly cloudy day. Temperatures mostly in the upper 60s and low 70s. A few drizzles coming through mainly toward the mountaintops. Otherwise, this is kind of coming as a misting. It is very light for the most part, but we do still have it in the mix from the southwesterly flow all the way through the rest of your day today and into tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to hold a slightly better chance for precipitation than Thursday beyond temperatures warm up skies clear up your Super Bowl Sunday looking very nice. We'll take a look at the uh, extended eight day microclimate forecast coming up in just a bit. Jenny, your favorite Girl Scout cookie. I had to Google it because I haven't bought them in so long. I used to be a Girl Scout, by the way, um, the peanut butter ones that oh. what are they the tag along tag -alongs. Uh huh. But to me, Girl Scout cookies are like a gateway drug. You right. know what I mean? If you buy those, it's just ga <laughs> it's game over from there. I'm sorry, I don't buy them. Huh? 602, welcome to your Tuesday. It is so quiet traffic wise. Your freeway times are fine. No major crashes reported. Here's what I do have for you. South on the 15 at about Imperial, we have reports of a brush fire. So you may notice some crews off to the side of the freeway. Jenny, thank you. And this morning, the community is trying to process this sudden loss of a teacher and football coach. So many questions here. The person who shot and killed this man is still out there this morning. News Age Chris Groh is live outside Cathedral Catholic High School with a closer look at the vigil as well as where the investigation stands right now. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Eric and Netta and Mario Fiera was a big part of this community. He was a teacher. He was a football coach and he had a profound impact on a number of students and players. He's not gone, but we need to just believe that he's living on in our hearts and he's he's living on forever and we are his family and that he will never die because he will always be everlasting in heaven with God and he will always be with us. And, and Fierro for him, I mean, this was a bit of a homecoming working at Cathedral Catholic because back when it was called uh, back when it was University of San Diego High School in 2002 back when it was located at Linda Vista he went there and then when the school moved here to Carmel Valley and it was renamed Cathedral Catholic he got the job here and he was a larger than life personality according uh, to the people that knew him in an email sent out to families they described him as young vibrant and full of life a sentiment that was echoed constantly last night now we all also learned that he had recently got engaged to another teacher here as well. So this was meant to be a time of celebration in Fierro's life. Instead, that life cut short when he was found shot and killed in North Park early yesterday morning. Now he was pronounced dead at the scene. A motive isn't clear and robbery doesn't appear to be the reason Fierro was murdered. So they are still looking for a motive in this case and not much is known either about who could have pulled the trigger. He's described as a Hispanic male, maybe in his mid 40s, and we've got some conflicting information about what kind of vehicle he was in. And again, Cathedral Catholic has paused school for the next couple of days until Thursday to try to give students and staff and families time to grieve. Grief counselors have also been made available to those who need it. Eric and Netta. All right, Chris, thank you. A former San Diego mayor, Kevin Faulkner, officially launching his campaign for governor today. In fact, he'll hold a news conference in Los Angeles this morning. This comes after taking to YouTube to announce his bid for governor of California. I know we can clean up California, and that's why I'm running for governor. I'm running to make a difference. In the two and a half minute video, Faulkner vows for a California comeback. He also criticizes Governor Gavin Newsom's handling of the pandemic and other issues like homelessness and job losses. This comes as Newsom faces a recall effort that continues to pick up steam. Newsom's camp has made a point of highlighting Faulkner's support for former President Donald Trump. 
Well, today marks the opening of a new vaccine superstation, this time in the East County. And this comes on the heels of a virtual town hall that addressed the concerns of a lot of San Diegans. News 8's Allison Royal is live in La Mesa to tell us more about this new site. Allison, good morning. Hey, good morning, Eric and Stella. Oh, sorry. Good morning, Eric and Netta. Stella is definitely on maternity leave having a baby right now. Anyway, this road is pretty quiet right now, but it should get pretty busy later. That's because Sharp Healthcare hopes to vaccinate 1,000 people per day here in La Mesa, if you can believe it. That number could go up to 5,000 people. This is the fourth super vaccination site here in San Diego County. The walk-up vaccination clinic here on Grossmont Center Drive will be open weekdays from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. and appointments are required. This comes after San Diego Mayor Todd Gloria held a virtual vaccination town hall last night. Gloria and San Diego County Public Health Officer Dr. Wilma Wooten said they hope San Diegans will choose to get the vaccine when it's their turn in line. Right now, health care workers and San Diegans 65 and older are eligible to receive the vaccine if they so choose. This is because they are a part of California's Tier 1A and Tier 1B. For emergency response, which includes firefighters and police, then it will also follow 50 to uh, 64 years of age and then 16 to 49 years of age uh, that have high risk uh, health conditions. And you may have noticed that Dr. Wooten didn't say anything about San Diegans under 16 getting the vaccine if they choose. That's because there isn't a vaccine approved for children yet. Netta and Eric. All right, Allison, thanks for that. In San Isidro, a smaller county-run vaccination clinic is opening at the Southwestern College Higher Education Center. This site will be providing up to 500 daily doses. It will be open from 9.30 to 3.30, Tuesdays through Saturdays, and appointments are required. New COVID cases in San Diego County continue their overall downward trend. The county is reporting 1,082 new cases. That is the lowest single-day total since November 29th. 10% of the 11,000 tests came back positive. COVID hospitalizations fell for the 16th straight day, now just uh, down to just over 1,300. The available ICU capacity has now risen to 19% and uh, no new deaths to report. Right now, there is a massive storm that's moving up the East Coast. Look how much snow it left right there on Times Square. And hey, there are a few more cars coming through right now. Uh, 70 million Americans in the path of this nor'easter. This is a live look from New York City, right in the heart of it. Uh, these blizzard-like conditions have caused major accidents on several of the roads across the Northeast. It actually shut down coronavirus vaccination sites as well. And the mayor of New York City has declared a state of emergency. He's asking people to stay home as the snow keeps on coming. So they still have, what, another day or so of this. Yeah. But it left its mark. Yeah. It, I think they can send right their there. vaccines to us for the day <laughs> while they're not administering Get them. The roll out a little higher. <laughs> exactly, right? <laughs> Encourage California's numbers. Uh, yeah, boy, the view out of Times Square shows that. I know cars are still making their way through. Oh, there, a little bit of a wider view there. Uh, shows what we're dealing with out on the roads there. As opposed to what we're seeing, which is almost entirely dry conditions. We picked up on a little bit of rain toward the mountaintops yesterday. As far as your totals, your observed totals that came in, we're talking about one one hundredth of an inch up to seven one hundredths of an inch was the highest that we saw. That is next to nothing. So it was very light for the most part. And today is going to follow suit. A partly cloudy day almost across the board. Temperatures in the upper 60s and low 70s. Look at the deserts. Boy, 79 degrees near 80 degree territory toward areas like Borrego Springs uh, where it is going to significantly warm up. However, if you're off toward the coast, we're going to hang out at about average or maybe just a few degrees above average. The warmer you get, the farther away from the coastline you most likely are with the exception of the mountains, of course. So here's the view uh, up overhead from satellite radar uh, where we are still picking up on those showers across the mountaintops and pushing toward the deserts. Uh, East County is going to see the possibility of those showers. Doesn't look like we're going to see much along the coastline. If we do see anything between today and tomorrow, again, accumulations are going to come to about one one hundredth of an inch, so very, very light. We are still hanging out with the southwesterly flow. This is thanks to a low pressure system that pinched off in our direction and is now giving us this relatively benign weather, but still kind of a nuisance for many people who again are getting their cars washed or maybe just recovering from this most recent storm that came our way. I know the drizzle can cause a little bit of mayhem, but we are going to be seeing all of that clear out to the east of us. We're going to dry out into Thursday and beyond, and that's when we have much calmer, drier weather on the way. Temperatures to start off your Tuesday morning looking pretty nice out there. Mostly 50s for the most part. 56 in Alpine, 56 in Chula Vista, 54 in Poway.